Trepang 2. What the hell is Trepang 2? And what happened to Trepang 1 for that matter? Truth be told, I'm a little confused about that myself, but here's what I do know, starting with the reason this game demo even exists. Trepang 2 is somewhat of a spiritual successor to the game Fear, also known as First Encounter Assault Recon, a first-person shooter horror game that had a cult following for its brilliant horror elements, super gory NPC death animations, the ability to slip in and out of bullet time, where you can slow down time itself in order to better place your shots, and its wonderful graphics. The first Fear game came out in 2005 and was developed by Monolith Productions and produced by Vivendi Universal and Warner Brothers. It was met with outstanding reviews and spawned several expansions and sequel games. Fear 2 and 3 were both met with pretty favorable reviews, but none of them really matched up to the original game, nor were any of them able to take a piece of the market share for first-person shooter multiplayer games. I myself played both Fear and Fear 2 and enjoyed my experience, but I was not wowed by the plotline for Fear 3, nor the fact that the original developers had nothing to do with the creation of that game, so I skipped Fear 3. Perhaps one day I will reconsider when another Steam sale comes along. Unbeknownst to me until recently, there was also a Fear Online launched in 2014, but it was quickly shut down in May of 2015 due to lack of popularity, support, and patches. With all of those games now a part of FPS history, Trepang 2 has found its way onto Steam with a demo that arguably functions as both a technical demo for the Unreal 4 engine, as well as a proof of concept for a game that with proper funding and attention from a big publisher could turn into something big in the FPS community if done right. If I recall correctly, I discovered this game by accident on YouTube, where it was labeled as a spiritual successor to Fear, and due to my fond memories with that game, I decided to check out Trepang 2 for myself with the promise of a free demo available on Steam. So how did it turn out? I'm Unreal, and this is a preview from an average gamer. To start with, when you search for this game on Steam, you'll find two pages. The first is for the full game, with the launch date of To Be Determined. The second is a direct link to the demo, though the full game page has a demo download section, so why this game needs two pages I don't know. The demo is very small in size, with the game folder weighing in at about 3.6 gigabytes on my hard drive. The demo includes the first part of the story, along with a couple of extra goodies to play around with, like a horde mode with 25 waves of enemies, and some cheats that allow you to play around with the engine a little more and make things interesting. The story confuses me, quite frankly, as even after a full playthrough, I have no real idea of what's going on or why. You start off in a dark room watching a TV that after a second or two says something to the effect of, they're coming to kill you. You appear to be a prisoner as you start out handcuffed. You leave the room and are compelled to walk down some hallways to try to find a way to escape, before prompts on the screen tell you to stay out of the light so enemies can't see you. Groups of soldiers walk nearby with assault rifles with tactical flashlights in search of you, and apparently other people like you, as you can hear them gunning down other prisoners while they search for you. What did you do? What did the other prisoners do? Why are they shooting people in cold blood while they're handcuffed and presumably locked in their rooms with no escape? None of this is really explained. As you walk, light bulbs that originally illuminated the hallways spontaneously burst, providing you with additional darkness to hide in. Why this occurs isn't explained either, but it is implied that you have some sort of supernatural powers reminiscent of those found in the Fear games. You eventually obtain a pistol, along with additional powers such as cloaking, the ever-popular bullet time, and some melee maneuvers, which seem to be the main focus of this demo. The bullet time in particular looks great, and it feels great. In my opinion, it needs no work and does exactly what it's supposed to do. It does have a limit to how long or how often you can use it, and it needs to be refilled with time, but at least you won't be doing anything ridiculous like hiding behind cover and ripping through cigars and booze while being shot at like you would in Red Dead Redemption 2. As neat as the gunfights are, I can't help but notice that the environments are not only boring, but largely unchanging. I would expect this out of an early development preview, not a demo. Traditionally, a real gameplay demo is supposed to be a sample of the full game, giving you just a taste. Most of your experience in Trepang 2 will revolve around going through white brick hallways littered with a bunch of wooden crates placed in random locations for no apparent reason, while attempting to dodge waves of semi-competent soldiers before eventually having to engage in firefights with them. Weapons feel pretty good, but you have no option to aim down the sights, which is something I hope they change before the release of the full game, and that's IF they have a release of the full game, as Trepang 2 has no production company as of this writing. On their Steam page, Trepang Studios is listed as both the developer and the publisher, and according to their own website, the development team consists of four people. Four people. The good news is, 
With the fact that they're using the Unreal 4 engine, it means that they don't have to design their own game engine, which in itself can take years, even for a well-staffed and well-funded studio. The bad news is that even with its own game engine already being developed for them, properly designing props, models, textures, and putting together a cohesive story and your own netcode if applicable still takes a ton of work. Plus, if a full game is to be released, trying to actually sell it rears its own set of challenges. But getting back to the game itself, in similar fashion to the original couple of Fear games, you do come across some documents providing small clues about what's happening as you move through the levels. But they still don't explain much in the grand scheme of things, so as far as the story goes, I still can't tell you where the game takes place, why it's taking place, or who's involved. Hopefully another demo will make its way to release, and the story will be expanded upon if there is one that's being written. Craig Hubbard was responsible for the story in the original Fear game, and the horror elements used were based on Japanese horror film methods, and it worked. They didn't beat you over the head with monsters or use jump scares every single time. The horror elements were tactful and were enough to get under your skin, as the development team put it themselves. After blasting through waves of enemies before coming to a final challenge, you are directed to meet an extraction team on the roof, who whisk you away in a helicopter to go... somewhere. You basically do this twice and then the demo is over, unless you decide to try horde mode or mess around with the cheat menu. There are a couple of minor horror elements, such as crudely made zombie models that for some reason also shoot guns instead of just trying to maul you, and a couple of semi-transparent spirits that chase and eventually attack you, draining your health as you move along. Do you get to see a creepy little girl in a red dress jump scare you to oblivion as you climb a ladder to another level, or a man you're chasing dissolve into ashes as you approach him? No. Hopefully with more time, and some more involved writing and scripting of horror events, this portion of the game will improve. I can't sit here and gush about the graphics or the sounds, because there isn't much to gush about. As I said earlier, the environments are made of hallways painted white, wooden crates, and dark lighting, so there aren't any impressive visuals other than the gunfights themselves. The Unreal 4 engine has fantastic potential, so I think the developers have a really great opportunity to strike a balance between great visuals, given they have a great graphic or art designer on board, and performance, because this game engine isn't very taxing and it scales very well for all different types of computers, no matter how powerful they are. Sounds are sort of the same story. There really aren't that many, because the environments are comprised of hallways and crates that I mentioned, and your gameplay experience is gunfights, gunfights, gunfights. The weapon sound effects are good, and bullet time works as you'd like it to. Lasting appeal doesn't really exist unless you love Horde Mode. That can change with a cohesive story and if they build a solid multiplayer element. I loved Fear, and I loved Fear 2 and its stories, but those games never really capitalized on the multiplayer elements. What I would love to see is a Fear-style game that has a really addictive, easy-to-get-into multiplayer mode that can take a different direction than your yearly Call of Duty and Battlefield releases or updates. Something more arcadey, fast-paced, and dare I say more fun, as a result of it simply being different. Is Trepang 2 going to turn out that way? Only time will tell, but after my experience with the demo, as linear as it was, this is a game that's worth following, and worth looking forward to if the developers continue their progress. I'm crossing my fingers that this game will make it to an actual launch date, rather than be doomed to vaporware status like some great alpha and beta stage products eventually slump into. Thanks for watching everyone, please be sure to like and subscribe to my channel so you can help me release new content on a regular basis. I'm Unreal, and you've just watched a preview from an average gamer.